Now we're talking, now we're talking Bears get trapped, the squeeze is in, and boy do we have a lot to talk about tonight, and really a lot to look forward to in what might be one of the best trading days coming tomorrow on Thursday morning. I have a lot of trades we're tracking for tomorrow, and as always, I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video that will use a game plan to make some money on this short squeeze we're seeing right now. Uh, we have a lot to cover tonight before we jump in though. Before we get the game plan going, I'm excited just thinking about it. Before we jump in, though, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss tomorrow night's video. And if you enjoy this stuff, give me a like button, right? Hit that like button. Give me a shout out in the comment section below. Thank you so much for tuning in, supporting the YouTube channel. But enough of the intro. Let's get ready for Thursday. Boy, what might be one of the best trading days here of the week. What's happening here on the charts right now? Boy, everything looking pretty bullish. S&P bullish. NASDAQ very, very bullish bullish you can see here and the oil oil has a nice bullish rotation coming off the low of that trading range now i'll tell you all three of these markets are are, are pretty bullish overall the s p you'll notice s p a little bit bullish right nasdaq very very bullish those differences the difference between the s p and the nasdaq really tell us where and how to find the best trades setting up here for tomorrow. We are definitely looking for some bear traps. We're definitely looking for some pullbacks. And we've got the debt ceiling drama continuing here right now. So we'll talk about some reversals if that's the case for tomorrow as well. So we, we, we have a lot to cover on both the long side and the short side here on the S&P and NASDAQ. Oil, oil looks nice and ripe for what we call a slingshot breakout. We've got breakout opportunities we're tracking here for oil. So lots, lots of great money-making opportunities we're getting setting up here for Thursday. Now, speaking of Thursday, before we go over each of the trades uh, in the video here tonight, let's all get on the same page here for tomorrow because we do have some big news tomorrow morning, 8.30 Eastern time. We get the GDP report. That will be the big headline news that we know about tomorrow. But you know what I'm going to say, right? You know what everyone's watching right now everyone is watching for the next update out of the white house the debt ceiling drama like i said last night i don't want to talk about this anymore i want it over with i know all of us want this behind us but they're going to drag this thing out you know those politicians they can't get enough of the spotlight right they're going to drag this thing out and really that is the big wild card for tomorrow we're going to prep our charts tonight get ready for the game plan tomorrow that, that, that debt ceiling update will definitely be something that we, of course, will be listening in tomorrow morning in our trade room. So be aware of that. We'll do our best here tonight, but that definitely is the wild card for tomorrow. GDP at 8.30 Eastern time tomorrow morning. Debt ceiling debate, debt ceiling drama, debt ceiling get over with already. Anyways, I digress. Back to our charts. <laughs> Back to our charts. S&P's ready. NASDAQ's ready. Crude's ready. Now, I'm going to go over all my favorite trades on all three of these markets right now if you like making money i would definitely make sure you watch all the way to the end because every trade i talk about tonight can be applied to your favorite market don't just click off after your favorite chart i will tie it all together and i'll give you a reason to stick around all the way to the finish here first of all don't forget these are tick charts upper left hand corner Th these will all be tick charts here tonight that is the 21 ema in case you're wondering and as always you can see some higher time frames i'm going to link up some four-hour charts, some 60-minute charts be linked up in the description of the YouTube video. I like to use those 60-minute charts specifically for my overall directional bias. So if you want to get a bigger picture look at some of the ways that I find my favorite trades each day, grab those higher time frames down in the description. Now, with that said, what's the most important factor that we have right now on the S&P? Well, we have what's called a one, two, three breakout pattern. Market went lower into a trading range. And you'll notice now we have this kind of, I call these one, two, three moves. I call these one, two, three, right? We call these one, two, three moves uh, in, in, in our trade. You'll, you'll learn more about that stuff in our free trading classes. So we basically know the buyers are trying to run this thing, squeeze this thing, right? Squeeze these bears out and run this market higher. Their objective is to get up around these areas up here, 41.66, 41.76. Now, I want to I want to split screen on this because it's very very important that we see the difference here between the S&P and the Nasdaq. The S&P right now is kind of mid, right? Mid reversal, mid 
squeeze mid one, two, three, right? It's on its horse trying to go. The NASDAQ is clearly the go-getter out of the group, right? Look at the NASDAQ right now. NASDAQ, similar stuff, right? Bear market into a range. Do you see how it kind of pops up? One, two, three, right? So of course, very, very strong on the NASDAQ. Now, why am I split screening these right now? Well, because very simply put, the S&P appears to have quite a bit more space to run, right? The objective has not been met on the S&P. The NASDAQ, we are now right into that objective, right? That's a really, really big, important clue. Why is it important? Well, because if the S&P S&P has room to run, oftentimes that means there are trades we can take on the way higher. But the problem is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's already way up here, right? We don't want to buy high, right? So on markets like the NASDAQ that have already made those big runs, we aren't exactly looking to get too aggressive up here. We'd rather wait for pullbacks. Now think about how this might go tomorrow, right? S&P starts accelerating higher. We've got trades on the way up. And then once it gets up there, right, then we start looking for, right, that deeper pullback to pull back from there. So we've got some more aggressive trades to talk about here in the short term on the S&P. And then later on in the video, we'll talk about some pullback trades that we were not buying too high here. We've got a lot we're going to cover here. We'll jump in first, though, on the S&P. S&P, again, mid-1, 2, 3 move, right? It's on its way to achieving this objective right now. Now, like I mentioned before, we've got that debt ceiling wild card out there right now. So that's the one variable that we don't exactly know everything about yet, right? That's the one thing that may, that may interrupt, right, this this big squeeze target as we're going higher. Here's what you want to think about, though, as we're going higher. Bear traps, okay? These types of one, two, three moves on the way up to the objective, you want to be thinking about trap entries. Now, you guys know these, right? We talk about these in my free trading course, right? They're called bear, this would be a bear trap. They're called traps, right? What you want to do is, is as the market begins to grind, or I should say, if the market continues to grind here overnight into the, into the morning, such as tomorrow morning, the goal is, is to buy as low as we can, right? It's a lot of momentum now for the bulls, but we don't want to buy high. And the way that, the way that I teach it is when you're looking to buy as low as you can, you want to buy with traps, right? You want to buy with traps. Now, once we start getting up, once we start getting up around those objectives now, now we're too high up, right? Now we're way high up. What we do is we now go, okay, we don't want to buy too high. Now we start thinking about those deeper pullbacks. So we draw trend lines off the high. We bring it down off the low, right? So I draw that. Now imagine now the moving average coming up just like this. Here's the trick. The trick is, is once we start getting up inside that objective zone, we then want to get underneath that 21 moving average. Now, you guys have heard me say this before. I'm not a big fan of picking bottoms on pullbacks, right? It can be very difficult to find the actual bottom on the pullback. What my favorite technique is, is to use what I call a failure pattern. Uh, you guys are learning these in the free trading course, right? So it's bullish. We're trading those bear traps on the way higher. And then once we get down the low of that channel, once we get underneath the moving average, we can then use, well, again, don't try to pick the bottom. Let the sellers come in and try to short into that moving average. These are classic. I, I'm still amazed at how well these work. Strong move like this, we'll want to retest the high. Once those bears get in, we now think, okay, where are their stops? And we can use the, basically their stops to fuel this move. The reason why I like to use these failure patterns like I'm illustrating right here is because it doesn't require me to pick the bottom. It also uses the opposite side of the market, their stops to fuel this thing running higher. Now, if you're taking my free trading course, you know that we like to grab what we call a, a combination, a failure into pullback combination on the way back up to retest the high, right? So again, just a quick recap, right? As we're going higher, we're watching for those, right, kind of grinding moves higher, right? Looking for bear traps or trap entries to buy as low as we can. Once we get up around the objective up here, okay, now we don't want to buy too high. Now we wait for the pullback. 
And again, pullbacks can be very tricky to time the entry on that, right? So rather than trying to time the bottom, which is very difficult, get underneath the moving average, wait for the bears to come in and try to short this thing down. And we can use the stops for fuel, like a failure pattern, right? Or the pullback combination off the moving average. Now, don't forget, I teach, I teach all of these setups inside of that free trading course. I know that most of you guys have taken this free class. You've learned all these. I get so many great emails every week about you guys making money with all the stuff you're learning in that free video series. But if you're here for the first time, if you haven't taken that free class yet, if you're one of the few watching who haven't yet to learn these entry tactics, I'll put a link up there for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link, take that free trading course, because I'll tell you, the strategy you'll learn in that short video series will teach you a simple, simple trick to know exactly where the best winning trades are gonna be that day. And I'll teach you my four favorite entry patterns things like traps, failures, pullback combos to help you start making money on your own account. If you're like me and you hate missing the best moves each day or you're taking too many losses, grab that link, take that free course. There are hundreds, hundreds of examples of things like bear traps on the way higher, right? And then of course, finding bigger channels and getting those deeper pullbacks, trap those bears in, right? And retest that high here. Now, I want to cover I want to cover one more kind of variation of this. I want to talk about right if this market wasn't to go higher here on the Nasdaq uh, on the S&P and then I want to go over to the Nasdaq and talk about some different scenarios that you may get out of this because again, the Nasdaq's already made it higher. So what do we do on the Nasdaq, right? How is the Nasdaq going to be played differently to this? You can probably understand, you can probably assume, but I I, I want to go over one very specific characteristic of the Nasdaq that is very much different than the S&P 500. So don't go bailing on me yet. We're going to cover the Nasdaq here in a moment. Now, what if we don't get that run higher, right? What if we don't end up rolling higher, right, and getting this kind of squeeze going here right now? What will be some other options we could look for? The S&P right now, right, we've got some overhead resistance. Sometimes what happens is when the NASDAQ reaches its objective first and it begins to pull back, it'll oftentimes drag the S&P down along with it. So let's talk about how to trade that as well. The key here is if we don't keep going higher, right, if we end up pulling back, along with the NASDAQ, w look at how I draw the channel, right? I, I draw that channel right up off the highs. Now, obviously I can't predict the future, right? I, I'm, I'm pretty good at it, but I'm not that great, right? If we do go higher, this will get adjusted going higher here. If we end up getting that pullback now, you want to be thinking about that same game plan, right? That same game plan to trap those bears in, use those stops as fuel and grab that failure into pullback combo, all right? So again, if we don't, if, if we don't get the market running higher here, like it really should, again, the debt ceiling issue, the debt deal is just a big variable and because that nasdaq has already reached its objective sometimes when the nasdaq pulls back it'll drag the s p back as well so we're looking for that same kind of pullback right failure below the moving average up around right on, on the pullback as we go and then keep in mind right this may end up triggering that strong blast right this may end up triggering that blast and if it does blast higher here again we know where the market's trying to go right we know kind of the objective now for that squeeze and so that would be where you, you you go use those bear trap entries make this make sense right so if we do end up pulling back the, the goal of course right the goal of course is to keep looking for those longs right off the low of that channel trap those bears in below the moving average failure pullback combination then as we start going higher right start getting that thing to take off right going higher here then we start looking for those again, those bolt, those, those 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 trap entries, right off that low. All right, guys. If everything was to fall apart, all right. Let's let's again. Does it feel like that right now? But hey, the debt ceiling deal is all there, right? If everything was to fall apart and the market rolled over back to those lows here right now, how would you trade it? How would you trade it? You would trade it with bull traps. Okay, for example, if we end up pulling back here, but we don't see the bears struggle and spike right there, right? Well, what will probably happen is it will probably end up doing something like that, right? It'll begin to pop and grind down. If that happens, it's very simple. We know the bears are trying to take out that low. And this point now, we don't want to sell low, do we? So how do we sell as high as we can? 
we need to get above a prior swing, right? We need some sort of bull trap or use. Now, watch closely here. What I'll do is I'll, tr I'll draw a trend line off these lows, bring it up around that high, and there's your sweet spot right there. Now, we can use really any of the entry patterns you guys are learning in the free trading course, but you're going to want to get above a prior swing. That'll be your best entry because that will be allowing you to sell as high as you can. Make sense? Now, remember, remember, right? If we pull back, right, and the bears start struggling and we start seeing higher, high, higher, high, right? That is a setup for a failure pattern, right? Right? Run those, right? The stops, the bears are coming in and they're trying to drag this thing lower and they're failing, right? Like back here, okay? However, again, if they pop, if they pop down and we, we begin to start grinding down, okay, now, now you know that grinding going lower, they're trying to take out that low, mark off that low, mark off that high, go looking for that combination, right, of those, of, of those swing highs along with the high of that channel. And that'll nine, nine times out of 10, that'll be your best entry as you go back down, right, to retest the low. All right, guys. So I'm I'm, a, I'm aware of that. Obviously, what we, we want to prepare for if that happens, that seems a bit less likely right now because the Nasdaq making that big move higher. But again, we always want to make sure we have the game plan with uh, with that kind of wild card, that debt ceiling debate going on uh, to, or, or continuing here for tomorrow. All right. So S and P is all ready to go here. We'll we'll look and see if we can get that squeeze now over in the Nasdaq. The NASDAQ, like I said, right, the NASDAQ is just a little bit ahead of the game, right? It's a go-getter uh, compared to the S&P. The NASDAQ also had the benefit of having the NVIDIA earnings this afternoon, which absolutely crushed it. Now that we've got AI coming in, everyone's trying to make their AI companies, right, using the NVIDIA, NVIDIA chips and, uh, and video cards. Okay, so on the NASDAQ, right, NASDAQ has a one, two, three move. If you are a student of mine, you know exactly what these are. We talk about these a lot um, in our trade room. So the big question now is: is do we want to keep buying high up here? Now there is a there 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 is a there is a there is a chance here right now. We've got this trading range above us. Ranges act like magnets, right? So that 13,900, 13,950 area, right? That'll be a magnet. If we do continue, let me clean this up here real quick here. Let me clean this up here. If we do continue to kind of squeeze higher here, what would be the best way to buy it? Yeah, traps, right? Like I mentioned earlier on the S&P, right? Now, these are obviously not as desirable as if we can get them down here, right? But that's the reality. Right now, markets are very volatile right now. We know the buyers want to get back up to retest this major high, 13 nine seven nine and a quarter on the way up right so if we open up and we keep on kind of grinding higher here going higher that is exactly where right the most i i think more more aggressive entries are what I always tell my students is, if you're going to buy an extended move like this, these are usually areas where you go half size, right? Quarter size. These are not full size positions when you're kind of way, way, way up here, right? So be aware, once we get that deeper pullback, okay, these are positions where you can load the boat, right? Those are the ones where you can really get a bigger position on because those have a much better risk reward ratio, right? So as we go higher, if we continue going higher on the NASDAQ, right? at least in my opinion, would be small positions, right? Half size, quarter size, because these are more likely to kick up and, and pull back against you, right? So be aware of that. Now, let's talk about pullbacks. One key difference between the NASDAQ and the S&P is the volatility, right? We all know this, right? The NASDAQ is twice as volatile as the S&P, literally twice as volatile. So, we know that we would love to get, right, kind of one of my favorite trades from the NASDAQ would be, I would love to get a nice deep pullback because, again, we're inside of that kind of objective, right, for these buyers. I would love to get that deep pullback now. I'd love to get the sellers to come in, try to short this thing back down again. Remember, anytime we see a strong move like this, there is one thing on those buyers' mind, and then it's to retest those highs, Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we expect to get a deep pullback to attract buyers at lower prices, right? Better value for the buyers, and they want to go back and retest the high. So like I mentioned on the S&P, my favorite trade on that situation, we get below the moving average. Don't try to pick that bottom, right? Trap those bears below moving average and use their stops for a fuel, right? Use that failure into pullback combo and go back up to retest the high.
Now, keep in mind, right, this could happen here. It could happen here if we keep going higher, right? It's simply a waiting game to get that pullback. The one thing you want to keep in mind of the NASDAQ is the NASDAQ is a wild, wild animal, right? So sometimes what happens is sometimes these pullbacks are really, really sharp. And because we have the debt ceiling drama continuing tomorrow, we can't rule out a very significant V top on this. This may also happen on the S&P. It's not as likely on the S&P because the S&P right, is the calmer, older brother or younger brother. I don't really care, but the much calmer, less caffeinated version, right? Of the of the of the Nasdaq here. So what do we do in a deep pullback? On a deep, deep pullback, it's not usually a reversal. It's usually just a sharp correction because, well, that's what the NASDAQ loves to do. So in these cases now, because we have a much sharper pullback now, now we want to use what's called the two-try failure. Okay, it's pretty simple, right? Instead of, instead of looking for the bears to come in try once, we let them come in and we try twice. Now, think about how this works right now, right? Sellers want to sell high, right? Sellers want to sell high. Buyers want to buy low. Sellers sell high. So as we pull back, the bears try once. We go to a higher price, right? Bears try again. I say this because I get a lot of questions about how to structure what we call the two try rule. We get that strong run down. We pull back. The bears try once. We go to a higher price. There's more bears up there. They try a second time, right? That is one, two. That signals the reversal going higher, right? That same situation, probably more condensed tomorrow, be found right here. Right, So again, if we get that modest pullback, that relatively shallow pullback, I trap the bears in, use a failure pullback combo. If it really, and keep in mind, guys, right, it may end up keep going higher and then rifle back lower as well, right? And so remember, we're... We're in, we're, in this kind of, we're in this kind of wild card situation tomorrow with the debt ceiling. If they really rip it back uh, lower here, we let the bears try once. We let them try twice. And with same idea, right? Same idea. Trap those bears in. Use those stops for fuel for that retest of the high. Now, keep in mind, when you get these really sharp, sharp pullbacks like this and you trap in a bunch of sellers, Right? What happens a lot of times is, is this thing just rips. And as it's ripping, how could I get in? Right? How could I get in? How could I buy without buying too high? Oh, you know this, right? You know this already. You're gonna buy traps. That makes sense? Right? Remember, traps are your traps are your easy money trade. When you know where the market wants to go, right? You've got that big run up, you know where the objective is to retest the high, right? So if we get that. That, that we call a two-try failure. You guys are learning failure patterns in the free trading course. It's a two-try failure. If we get that pattern set up and the market punches and begins to strong move, shallow pullback, higher high in price, traps, baby, right? That's the way you buy into it. Or you don't chase after it, right? Then you're buying high. Right, you want to buy as low as you can because, well, think about it, right? What's the risk-reward ratio? The risk is here. Reward is there. You've got to buy as low as you can to put yourself in line with the smart money, the bigger players in the markets who will be waiting for that chance to buy that bear trap. Right? That's one kind of key difference there on the NASDAQ. And then one more thing too, one more thing, and this will also apply to the S&P as well, is a range. Right? It, it, should, it should come at no surprise tomorrow if we see a trading range up here. Right. If we if we go sideways here tomorrow, as everybody's waiting around to hear from McCarthy or or Joe, right? Who cares, right? But as as everyone's waiting around for that tomorrow, it may go sideways, right? We may not get that continuation. If it goes sideways, what do we do? We look left. We find levels of support below the trading range. Now tomorrow, I will show you how to use the size of that trading range to find what we call range expansions. So what happens is once we know where that range is, we can then double it down and find key support using the size of that trading range. The bottom line is, if we're bullish into a trading range, we're gonna go out and find things like triangle levels, pendulum swing levels, uh, support levels down below that trading range. And it's pretty simple. Ranges act like magnets, right? It's a bull market in this case into a, into a range magnet. I'm gonna wait for that pullback. I'm gonna try to get those bears 
trapped in below it, same thing. Use that failure pattern. Failure patterns are pretty easy money. They're usually pretty easy money right off support levels below a trading range. Okay, and again, this could easily happen on the on the S and P as well, right? S and P jumps up into a trading range. We are simply using that failure, and if we're lucky, we don't always get the pullback combo. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, right? Most of the time we don't. Most of the time, what happens is it'll it'll fool so many breakout traders, it'll snap right back up to the high, target off at the high, and then don't forget the amount we go below the range can be projected above the range and that creates your runner, right? That creates your follow-up target, right? We'll take half off at the top of that trading range, right? Save a piece of it, right? Either a quarter, right? Or either a quarter, right? Or a half off at that pendulum swing. On a day like tomorrow, maybe a quarter, then leave a quarter for a runner, right? But that's the general idea if it goes sideways into a trading range, all right? So NASDAQ, right? NASDAQ, if we continue going higher, right? keep going higher, it's small size, right? Small size on the way higher because, again, we're so high up. And then it's, it's bigger size once we get those deeper pullbacks because those are the ones that everybody be waiting for, all right? And as I mentioned before, like on the S&P, if we were to pull back right now and they're going to hold this pullback and begin to run this thing lower here, doesn't seem as likely right now, but if they hold the pullback and run lower, then they go up, we find trend lines of the low, up around that high, right? We start looking for right prior swings and we look for traps off the high of that channel all right again doesn't seem as likely right now but who knows right who knows and if we do get remember the key to these is is get under the moving average and the bears have to hold the pullback right like that right get under the moving average bears hold it and go from there okay obviously not just like that right but they have to hold that pullback below the 21 moving average if they come in hold that pullback and begin to accelerate going lower off the moving average okay that's a reversal Right, that's a reversal, and now we go out and look for that first test off the high of that channel. Right, it could be a bull trap, could be a buyer failure, could be a pullback combo, and you know where they want to go at that point. Right, if, if they get that reversal, they want, they want to go back and bury these lows. Right, all right. So we're gonna keep an eye on that tomorrow as well. All right, I'm excited. I'm excited. S and P, Nasdaq, very similar. Right, very similar kind of game plans, but they're both in different stages of the one, two, three move. We'll talk more one, two, three move action tomorrow morning. The trade room. Over to the easy one. Yeah, the easy one. The easy one here tonight. Over on the crude oil. Oil. Pretty, pretty simple uh, kind of kind of uh, scenario we have right now um, on the crude oil. Right now we have a bull market into a trading range, and we have well, what do we just talk about? Right. It's it's a range. What do we do with a bull market into a trading range? We find levels of support. Right. Remember how last night we talked about breakout pullbacks. Remember that last night, right? Breakout pullbacks. Mark goes up into a range. We break out. That is that is the easiest support you'll ever find in a range bound market. It's a prior range high, right? On top of that, you'll notice here, you know me, I love to draw my channels off the highs, right? So draw the channel off the high, off that low support level, right? So it's pretty pretty similar, it's pretty similar to what we just talked about on the NASDAQ. Bull market in the trading range, wait for that breakout, wait for the bears to foolishly sell into support, support, support below the range, and just buy in those stops, right? Just buy right into those stops for a run back where? To the opposite side of the trading range. Now, where do we think the market wants to go now? It'll want to take out these highs. It'll want to complete what we call the pendulum swing, the amount below the range, the amount above the range, I would imagine this 7508, my big breakout target overhead around 7560, 7529. I would imagine that area, 7560, 7545 there, right? 39 there, right? That's a very, very likely objective here as we go higher. So we have now what's called rotation off the low. It's a bull market, trading range. We're rotating off the low and looking for that rotation going higher here. What's my big concern up here? What is my big concern as we're going higher? Trap, or sorry, not, not traps, but, but buying too high, right? Well, I'm buying nice and low down here, right? You're buying relatively low, relative to what? The high of day, right? If you're buying down here, right? Risk reward's fantastic down here, okay? You're buying low down here, right? You're not buying low up here, right? You're buying high. So we've talked about this already, right? If we keep going higher here, what do you think on the way up to that objective target, what's the best entry? It's a trap. Right? It always will be. Right, It'll always be a trap. Right, It's the best way to do it because you're trying to buy as low as you can. 
and you can buy up there, right? So, so, so one common question is, you know, well, why am I not selling up here, right? Isn't the range a magnet? You could sell this if it was a bear market into a trading range. It's not a bear market though, right? It's a bull market. So we filter our trades based on that directional bias, right? We're a bull market right now and we're rotating off of that low. In a bull market, a range, you buy off the low, you trade breakouts to the high. Again, if it was a bear market into a trading range and we went up and we're going lower, right? Yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't buying down there. We sell that breakout, right? So you want to filter it based on that directional bias. Okay, and now we assume that bears will be up here. More importantly, we assume there'll be buyers who got in down here taking profit up here. And what that usually ends up resulting in is, is, is bears try once, bears try twice, and you've got that trap right there. And then what do you think, right? What do you think? Let's, let's, let's kind of clean this up a little bit here now. What do you think? If we end up running higher here, right, we get that nice trap, right? Nice little trap entry, and we blast. Okay, now think back to what we talked about earlier in the video, and really last night's video as well. What do you think is the best trade now? Remember, whenever we break out of a trading range, keep your eyes on the areas around the highs, right? So that area, just back here, right? We break, we break out of a range. Where do we go? Back to the range high again. So this is literally rinse and repeat, right? We break out of the range. We start marking this area right here, okay? We keep an eye on really this whole area, that whole area right there, right? All those highs out there, they create a big barrier of support, okay? Then what do you do? Then you go out and find a channel. Go find that larger channel off the high, right? Bring it down off that low. And then what's the goal? The goal is, is to get below the moving average, right? We do the channel off the highs. We want to get below that moving average. Again, think about where that range top was, okay? This becomes a sweet spot, okay? These are situations where any, any signal can be very useful, right? I'm always telling my students in the trade room, look for situations where any trade will probably make you money. Right, that we don't need to be some some special pattern, some special signal. Right, this is a situation where almost any trade will make you money. I like to use failure patterns. Right, again, rather than trying to pick that bottom, what I'll do is is try to get the bears trapped in, use their stops, let them show what they're doing. Right, because who knows, they may go back into that trading range. Right, I don't want to get in too early. So you wait for the bears to commit, you use those stops as fuel to time the entry and to give you a boost on the way back up to where back to retest that high. It's always going back to retest the high, right? It's always going back to retest that. It's always the objective in a bull market. In a bear market, the objective, the objective is to retest the low, right? Simple as that, okay? So almost, almost the same game plan as the S&P and NASDAQ. On the way up, we trade bear traps, right? We want to buy as low as we can on the way up. Once we get up into those objective areas, and we'll talk more about how to find those objectives tomorrow morning in the trade room, right? We get below the moving average, trap the bears and with failures, pull back combos. And remember, number two, right? If it, if it was to jump, okay, what do you do on the way up? Traps, baby, right? I, I know I talk a lot about traps, but I'll tell you right now, learn to use traps and you will dramatically increase your odds of success. And you'll probably not, you'll probably, you'll probably make money, make quite a bit of money as well, right? Once you learn to, uh, to resist the temptation to chase the market and buy with traps or sell with traps, okay? They will, they will dramatically almost overnight, uh, keep you out of trouble and put you on the meat, right? Put you on the good stuff. All right, guys, that's the game plan for the S and P, oh, sorry, for the, Na sorry, for the NASDAQ. Who am I right now? Right. End of the day here for the, for the oil, right? For the oil. Uh, one more thing too, one more thing too. If we were to to roll over, right? Roll over and retest the low now. What would you do in that situation? It's an overall bull market right now, right? It's not a bear market. So we're very hesitant to sell down here. If we were to roll over and go lower, what does that tell you? It tells us that for whatever reason, right, the buyers are not as strong as we thought they were. These are situations where we look for two try failures. Right, we've got some support trend lines down here, support down really anywhere in this area. Make the sellers prove to us they want to take it lower. Right? Remember, we're not a bear market. We're a bull market overall right now in the 60 minute and the bull range. Let those bears try a couple times down here. Right? We'll need to use a two try because now momentum is a lot more bearish. 
right? Not a bear reversal yet, but but again, we're short term more bearish in momentum, and because I don't have because I don't have as much bullish momentum in that situation, I need to I need to first let the bears show show me what they want to do first, and then use their stops as a catalyst for a run back up. So if we do end up rolling over, taking out that low, we're not gonna we're not gonna give we're not giving up on the buyers just yet. We're trapping the bears in and looking for that run back higher again. Sometimes they'll do that. Sometimes they'll pull back nice and strong. They'll roll over, retest that low, and then bears get roped in and bam, right back up from there. Keep using that range as a magnet. Keep focusing the buy side until we see the bears actually hold that pullback and take it lower. All right, guys, great, great game plan here on the crude oil. See, I told you I would wrap all this stuff together here tonight. I want to thank you so much for sticking around all the way to the end. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, we're going to do this all together. The good stuff happens tomorrow morning in our trade room. I'll put the trade room membership links. I'll put the free class links. I'll put everything you guys need um, down in the description of the video tonight. If you need any help getting in, if you need any help or questions along the way, Hey, don't be afraid to call the office. Don't be afraid to use live chat. If you need help, we're here for it. So keep in touch. Don't be a stranger. Guys, thanks so much for watching tonight. As always, be well. Be nice to each other. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. If not, same time, same place tomorrow night. We'll wrap things up ahead of a long holiday weekend. Now get out of here. Get some rest. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.